of Ichimoku, Kinko, Ohio, and a brief description on the trading system. This will cover signals and the terminology. Now, Ichimoku history, you can read back through this, but basically it's a charting system that was developed before World War II by Goichi Husada. Okay, and he back tested this for quite some time and finally released it 20 years later in 1968. Ichimoku is a very finely tuned integrated charting system where all five lines I'm going to discuss all work in concert to produce the end result. Ichimoku means one glance, kinko means equilibrium or balance, and hayo means chart. It's composed of five lines, Tikensen, Kijinsen, Sinku, span A and B, and Chiku. Tikensen is the faster of the two lines. Sinku span A and B actually make up the Kumo, or the cloud that you see very distinctive across the screen. And Chiku is a signal line projected behind price. The components are made up of Tikensen, which is taking the highest high and the lowest low during the last nine periods or nine candles and dividing it by two. Kijutsen, same thing, highest high and highest low calculated over the past 26 periods divided by two. Chiku, most current closing price, plotted 26 periods behind. Sinku A is Tikensen and Kijutsen divided by two, which is plotted 26 periods into the future which is very important to understand and I'll point that out in a chart. Siku span B, highest high, highest low calculated over the past 52 periods divided by 2 and then that's plotted 26 periods into the future. The signals are Tikensen Kijinsen cross, I'll just say TK cross, Kijinsen cross, which is where price actually passes through Kijin and closes above. The Kumo breakout, which is where price actually breaks above the Kumo and closes above same. The Siku span cross, which is also called the Kumo twist, which signals a, a change of trend. And usually I use that for a uh, confirmation signal. And the Chiku span cross, where Chiku actually crosses through price and it's used for confirmation as well. Some credits, some of this information was taken from kumutrader.com which gives you all the detailed information about signals and so forth. So let's take a look at a few charts and we'll discuss Tikensen, Kijitsen, Chiku, Span A and Span B and Kumo to give you a sense of the use of Ichimoku. Okay. Now first off you notice the Kumo which is comprised of span A which in a bullish chart span A is on top span B is on the bottom. On a bearish chart span A would be underneath span B. You have Chiku which is this line here. Okay, Notice how it's passed through price. You have Tikensen which is the red line. You have Kijitsen, which is a slower, remember? Kijitsen is 26 periods and Tikensen is 9 periods. Alright. The importance of the volatility or how Tikensen and Kijitsen are calculated versus the way we do it in standard charts where the moving average is based on the closing price. As such, the standard charts that we normally use before Ichimoku did not figure in volatility, whereas Tikensen and Kijutsen, because of the periods 9 and 26, it figures in the volatility of a particular stock move. Now this was obviously HD um, on the close of the 8th. The last video I did was three days prior, so you can see the move that we had up through the cloud and now um, Home Depot is approaching 52 week highs again. This is very bullish. Okay, so, but Tikensen and Kijutsen, this is an important concept to understand, are calculated using Tikensen in particular, nine periods one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine candles 
taking the highest high to low to low, dividing that by 2, and then plotting that point right there. Okay? The reason why that's important is because it figures in the volatility. Kijit Sen is the same thing, 26 periods. You count 26 periods here, you divide it by 2, and that's where Tikken Sen is. The high and the low during those 26 periods are here and here. So that's right between the two. Okay? So that figures in the volatility of those 26 days. And then that's further projected forward into the Kumo. Okay? 26 periods and 9 periods forward. Very important concept to understand. And what that tells you is when you see Tick and Send sloping hard one direction or the other, it's figuring in all that volatility. If it were above, it would be stronger. Below, it would be a little bit weaker. So Now, the importance of the Kumo, you can see the varying thicknesses, and that's because of sequence span A and B, remember, or a sum of Tick and Send and Kijit Send divided by 2, and it's plotted. 26 periods into the future. All right, so these closing candles here are actually projected 26 periods into the future, and that's where Kumo occurs. 26 periods in front, span A. Span B is the highest high and highest low calculated over the past 52 candles, divided by 2, and then plotted 26 periods into the future. The significance of that is Kumo is used as a support and resistance feature, okay, both with price and with Chiku, a confirming signal, and with Tikken San and Kijin San. The thickness is directly proportional to its ability to resist a move higher or support a move lower. When price is inside of uh, Kumo, that's considered a no trade signal. A tick and send cross to the downside is a bearish cross when it passes through Kijutsen. If we come back in price here, you can see where we had our first TK cross right here back in October of 2011. The significance of the system is that it's a trend following system and as such it'll keep you in a trade much longer because although this is a buy signal here, this TK cross, we also have a Kumo breakout where price moves above Kumo and closes. We had a buy signal here. You do not have a sell signal until the red line crosses down below the white line. The Tikin crosses the Kijin, or TK cross to the downside. You don't have that occur until here in May, several months later. Okay, So that's the significance of the TK cross. In addition, most often Tikken San and Kijit San act as support mechanisms like many people use uh, the 20 period or the 10 period to um, keep them in a trade. Where a close below the 20 period with many traders would be, like in this case here, would be either a sell signal or you would take some off. Same thing with Tikken San and Kijit San, okay? Except for the caveat that this is a sell signal here. So that's Home Depot. And we covered Tikken San, Kijit San, Chiku, Span A, and Span B. But we didn't cover Chiku uh, to a great extent. So Chiku is the closing price projected 26 periods to the rear of close. All right, so this closing candle here is actually that particular. Um, that's the location of the Chiku. Okay, 26 periods behind. And what Chiku is used for is a area of support and resistance, likely bounce areas. Okay, so if you look back in the past, remember this is the closing price, 26 periods back. In the future, we can view that 
as an area of likely support. You can see what happened here. Okay, Chiku was above price, so that's bullish. That's another thing about a price above Tikkensan and Kijitsan. Long as Chiku stays above price, that's bullish. Okay, when it breaks down through, that's a bearish signal. That's actually a a Chiku span cross. Okay. And that's a bearish cross there as well. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. You can see 26 period back is that particular signal, which occurs at the same time as that TK cross. All right, so that's a confirmation signal. Now this is an example of a bearish chart that I like to use as an example. This is uh, U.S. Steel and you can see where price came down to Kumo, rallied up and then we broke down through Kumo. Um, Chiku as well got caught up in Kumo and broke down below price, okay, which is very bearish. And we had a TK cross right here. Okay, which is a sell signal. It wasn't a strong sell signal because it's above Kumo. But we had another Kumo cross here. Okay. Or excuse me, we had another TK cross here. We also had a Kumo breakdown where we came up, we tested Kumo again, and then we immediately failed. Okay. Now if we zoom out on this chart, we can see that every time price came up to Kumo, we got rejected. You can see that Chiku is below price, which is bearish. Okay, this is our first sell signal right here with uh, TK cross and Kumo breakdown, a retest, and a sell as well. Okay, we retested. Now remember, this is March, April. This is April of 2011, and price starts to move back into Kumo, gets caught up in the chart, All right. and we're starting to see how we got sideways action, and then of course uh, Kumo uh, most recently uh, rejected price and we have traded down as well. So again, where we had a TK cross here, and we had Chiku below price and everything broke down below Kumo recently. Okay, so that's an example of a bearish chart. Now recently Elvis I've been trading um, today as well as the last few days. Today we had a five minute um, Kumo, actually it was yesterday towards the end of the close, we had a five minute Kumo breakout and that followed through to the 15 minutes, which is what I was posting in the room today. Okay, we had this situation here where I kept saying that eventually price is going to break through the Kumo, and you can see that we rallied from 44.05 up to 44.45 dollars. So um, that was a dollar move once we had that Kumo breakout to the upside on a 15 minute. All right. But we were in this trade early on in the morning, okay, due to the fact that we had a five minute Kumo breakout the previous day at the close, and we were looking for a continuation, which we got early in the morning. Now, so this is what I was talking about during the day. We could see that once we had the Kumo breakout, we had Chiku was already above price. What I was looking for was this Momo to continue into the 15 minute, which we got. Okay. We had Chiku emerge above towards the end of the day. Chiku uh, emerged above the Kumo. So this more than likely is going to rally uh, tomorrow. I still have the uh, spread on. So we'll see how this plays out. What I'd look for is this to continue into the 30 minute, the Momo. Alright. So this is the breakthrough Kumo. We have a TK cross right here. So that's bullish. It's below price, so that's a little bit weaker signal. Okay. We have Tikkensen 
excuse me, Chiku has emerged above price. That's bullish. And we have price about to emerge on the 30 minute above the Kumo. So, and I do check back and forth between my time frames on a standard chart related to um, Kumo. So I just tab back and forth through these like a, a standard chart. I also have a chart set up where I use Keltner channels and Bollinger bands for Sigma, but since we're talking about Ichimoku, we won't cover that right now. So tomorrow I'm looking for a move above the Kumo here. That'll be a continuation signal. And then I would look for that to continue into the 60 minute, which presently we have some resistance up here at the 46.75, 47.25 area. Okay. Note the narrowness of the Kumo related to this over here. So there should be less resistance. And we're almost going to get a TK cross right here on the 60 minute. So we're going from the 15 to the 30 to the 60 minute as a continuation. And depending on what happens there, I'll look at the four hour chart. Okay, I'd look for this to be a, a Kijun cross here where price would pass through Kijun and close above. That would be a Kijun cross. We got the stochastic over so in crossing. And then I would look for TK across to the upside. Then I would look for resistance up here at the 48, 49 area, which is where that shows up on on GOAT's chart. Okay. So again, this is Cousin Vinny with a brief uh, primer on Ichimoku, both a bullish and a bearish chart. Go to KumoTrader.com to see more in-depth information about the signals. Okay, take care. It's Cousin Vinny. Remember to use your stops and we'll talk to you soon.